I will start by drawing a picture of medulla and then we'll talk about the medial medullary syndrome. So let's start here. trying to draw uh, an axial section of the medulla. Since we are going to talk about the medial medullary syndrome, I will not draw the structures on the lateral side which I have already shown in the lateral medullary syndrome. So when you look at this image, this is an axial section of the medulla. This is the area of the pyram this is the pyramidal region. These are the inferior cerebellar peduncles here. I'll fill the pyramidal regions with a blue color here. So this is the pyramidal region which carries the corticospinal tracts. You have the medial longitudinal fasciculus somewhere here. This is where you have the medial longitudinal fasciculus and then you have the medial lemniscus somewhere around this area. So we are talking about the medial medullary syndrome and I'm drawing structures on the medial side. Okay, you have the hypoglossal nuclei over here and the hypoglossal nerve goes from here and passes out next to the pyramids so let's go over the anatomy again. These are the corticospinal tracts. You have the medial lemniscus here. This is the medial longitudinal fasciculus. These are the hypoglossal nuclei. These are the hypoglossal nerves. Okay. Medial medullary syndrome results from an infarct that affects the medial structures. So it may affect approximately somewhere here and affecting this whole medial surface. Medial longitudinal fasciculus is typically not involved. I'll just draw the structure, shade the structures that are involved here. So these are all the structures that are involved with the medial medullary syndrome. Okay. So let's talk about I'll pick a pen. So if you have the corticospinal tracts involved, so these are the corticospinal tracts, this would lead to contralateral contralateral weakness. This will only affect the arm and the leg so this will be contralateral so let's say if this is the left side of the medulla and this is the right side of the medulla if you have a stroke that affects here so if the stroke affects the right side you will have a left sided weakness okay number two you have the medial lemniscus involved so medial lemniscus involvement will cause contralateral decrease in position and vibration sense. Position and vibration. As you would recall, the medial lemniscus is a continuation of the dorsal columns. So when medial lemniscus is involved here, so if it is the right medial lemniscus involved, it will cause 
left sided decrease in position and vibration then you have the twelfth nerve hypoglossal nerve involved it will cause ipsilateral that is the same side of the right side if the stroke is on the right side it will cause right sided weakness of the tongue weakness of tongue so let's go over the anatomy again you have the corticospinal tracts involved which will give you contralateral weakness of the arm and leg you have the medial lemniscus involved which gives you decreased position and vibration on the contralateral side you have the hypoglossal nerve and nucleus is involved which gives you ipsilateral that is the same side weakness of the tongue when someone's tongue is weak if you ask them to protrude the tongue the tongue will deviate to the side of the weakness if you look it at rest you will see some deviation to the contralateral side so that is something to remember now what blood vessel supplies this we'll talk about that so it's the anterior spinal artery which is a branch that comes out of the vertebral artery so it's the anterior spinal artery that goes here and supplies this whole area this is not a good blood vessel that I'm drawing here but it's the anterior spinal artery that affects there so either there's a problem with the vertebral artery or the anterior spinal artery now the something else that you need to keep in mind is the medial medullary syndrome may not be a complete syndrome you may only have involvement of the corticospinal tract and medial lemniscus so if it is just a very mesial stroke it may spare the twelfth nerve and you may not see any tongue weakness and you will only see contralateral weakness and contralateral decrease in position and vibration if it affects if it also involves the medial longitudinal fasciculus which is right here you can see some vertical nystagmus with the medial medullary syndrome so those are a few things to keep in mind this is just a picture this is an angiogram of uh, angiogram of the vertebral artery in fact it's an MRA what you see here you see the vertebral artery here you see the sick other vertebral artery these two vertebral arteries join together to form the basilar artery the anterior spinal artery comes out somewhere here and there are two stems from the vertebral artery that join together to form the anterior spinal artery so this is the anterior spinal artery that's involved with the medial medullary syndrome this is a picture this is an axial section of an actual MRI this is the medulla so when someone has a medial medullary syndrome you are you typically affect this area somewhere around here so in the middle mesial area here that's affected so you are affecting you're involving the hypoglossal nerve which comes out somewhere here you have the medial lemniscus you have the pyramidal region which is around this area so those areas are involved which leads to medial medullary syndrome so that's it for today thank you